It's 1847, old California, a land of hatred and violence. When General Santa Ana withdrew his forces before the crushing onslaught of the American army, small bands of courageous Mexican soldiers still resisted in a valiant effort to save their land. Get your man in position. Yes, sir. Take your position. Take the camera to the south. Martin. See, Captain. The west wall there. See, Captain. Prepare the charge, Scott. Prepare the charge. Move. Eduardo. We all in the center of the corner. Where is that? Captain Miguel Sebastian, Tiger of San Luis. You know, I think our captain would much rather have died fighting. <sighs> Almost did. Boyle! Yes, sir. Come here. 
scout this place. There might be more men holed up. Yes, sir. There's no need, Captain. All of my men have been accounted for. We can count them dead of our own. Don't shoot, please. It might cool you. Captain Sebastian, you won't have her. Santa Ana surrendered. All right, hop down, mister. Let's see that communication. Take care of him, Boyle. All right, sir. Some Santa Ana's headquarters, all right. The war is over. Party? Yes, sir. Take Sebastian and his courier inside. And remember, he's to stay alive. Scott? You and Boyle, I'll check our casualties. Boyle, am on up? Yes, sir. Three years later, the Mexican soldiers, now poverty stricken, homeless civilians, have been uprooted from their farms by the treachery of power-mad Angus Clyde McCain. The land is mine! Mine! I keep it! Now go! You hear me? Go! Now settle down, both of you. We've got work to do. Not me. I've had enough of you, McCain. Scott! You quit me, don't you ever cross my path again. Don't you worry. One county's large enough for me, you can have all this land. But I just hope you're big enough to keep it, McCain. Judge Ward Young? That's right. And I guess you're Sheriff Miller? Oh, no, sir. Geezer is the name. Mr. McCain fired Miller. Guess he took the job too serious or something. Me, I just string along. I'll wager you're firing Young, the marshal. This is a real distinction, son. Well, thank you, sir. We've come here to investigate some property cases. Well, we've got a bunch of them there disputes around here, Sheriff. Gentlemen, yeah. 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 I want to hear each one of these cases individually. We'll post a docket as soon as possible to let you know when you'd appear in court. What's a docket, Hoss? A docket means tomorrow, Hoss. Now the moose! Skit, skat, all of you! Mucho, mucho! Skit! You gentlemen come right on up to my office. It ain't fancy, but it's legal. I'd like to talk to Marty. I want to get him in Don't forget to put a word into me, Marty. Well, right in, gentlemen. Tell him about my mind. He sure tell him about it. Don't forget to tell him about it, yeah? Remember me. Don't forget to tell him about my land, Jeff. Yes, 
church. These complaints cover a lot of territory. To begin with, who's this man, Angus McCain? Maybe I can explain it, Your Honor. Marshal. Pardee's the name. I'm foreman, general troubleshooter for Mr. McCain. He asked me to trot on over here and clear things up for you. Now, that's right nice of Mr. McCain. Why didn't he come? Oh, he had some important matters to take care of down on the South Range. But he accommodated in sort. Cattle's his main line. We had to push a trail through to Santa Fe. So naturally, the people who lived in the way just had to move out. Simple as that. Yep. But like I said, he's accommodating. Yeah, he gave all the farmers fair notice. What's more, paid him to give. Mr. Pardee, you can't force people to sell their property. I'm trying to explain it to you, Judge. The people never owned it. McCain bought clear title to every inch of ground from here to Sunday. The Sebastian land grant? That's it. We'd like to see this deed. Sure, any time you want to take a look at it. Mosey on out to the place. Thanks. We just might do that. Then again, we might just order you to bring it here to court. My judge, try to get it through your head. There aren't any grounds. There won't be any trial. Take your head off when you're talking to a judge. I beg your pardon. You heard me. Take the cigar out of your mouth. Suppose you do it for me. Diego here, who seems to know something about his property rights. For many years, I served Miguel Sebastian. Long time back before the war. He was a kind man. He was my friend. He gave to me this land and this house that goes with it. I raised the crops. This is all I have. And no one is going to take it away from me. You have no deed or other written paper to prove that Sebastian gave you this land. No, but he did. I lived here for many years. And knowing that he gave it to me, I worked on it, raised my children. McCain claims title under a sale land grant. That is so. We have no papers. But Senor Sebastian wouldn't sell our home, which he already gave to us. He, he was strict, I'm sure. We'll see what we can do. How long have you been living here claiming this property was yours? Ever since he gave it to me, 15 years ago. I think we ought to go over to McCain's and take a look at that deed. See if it's valid. Yes, sir. Senor? Make yourself at home, gentlemen. Pour my drink, party. Gentlemen? No, thank you. No, thank you. Nice place you got here. I'd have brought this deed to town myself, Your Honor, if I hadn't been tied up. If you can bet I wouldn't turn it over to anybody else. How did you meet Sebastian? Well, I want to tell you, it's a piece of luck. We ran on to him while on leave down in Matamoros. How about it, Pardee? Would you have taken him for a Mexican officer? No. I took him for a Don Juan out of Veracruz. He was drunk on a hoot owl, playing pharaoh and losing bad. Assigned to Angus Clyde McCain. Witnessed by Scott Johnson, Damon Pardee, and Timothy Voyle. Who's Voyle? That's me. Tell me, Mr. McCain, how much did you fellows pay for this deed? We picked up Sebastian's gambling debts. How much was that? All he owed. 
It was $850, to be exact, Judge. Took everything we had in our jeans. How much did this Scott Johnson pitch in on the deal? Oh, $50 thereabouts, he'll remember. I'm sure he will. Where can we find him? Claytonville. Paper looks good. Beats me why a man would sell so much land for a bag of pennies. You boys made a better deal on the Louisiana Purchase. Question Scott. Yeah, he don't even know what story he told. You better him. get over there and tell him what to say. And what if he doesn't say it? He will. He stands to lose his spread, same as we do. Yeah, but Scott didn't like this thing from the start. Boyle's right. But if we need a club, Scott's got a mighty nice little wife to worry about. Yeah. Better get the riding party. Cowboy. You sure built this place up. Still a lot to be done around here. Yeah, sometimes I think you were smarter than the rest of us. You settled down to enjoy life. The king keeps us on a push so much. Eddie, why'd you come over here? The circuit judge and the marshal are checking up on our land grant. So I heard. They'll be coming out here. It figures. Scott? Yes, honey? Lunch is ready. In a second. Lovely little woman. You'll tell His Honor that we picked up Sebastian's gambling debts. About $850 worth while we were on leave in Madame Morris. As good a yarn as any. Say what I'll do, Purdy. I'll make a deal with you. I'll go along with your story, providing McCain gives the land back to the people he kicked out. You're in no position to bargain. Prepared to lose my land. Never felt it was mine anyway. How you feel is no concern of ours. Purdy, I've had something on my chest for a long time. I'd like to get it off. McCain had no right to kick these people off the land. He could have rooted his cattle trail along the ridge. We're not interested in driving our cattle 40 miles around some fenced-in hog pens because they're blocking the valley. Besides, you've got a lot more to lose than just your land. What do you mean? You're crazy. You're out of your mind. Don't forget our story. So that's the whole story. We extorted the land from Sebastian by threatening his life. I was against it, but McCain held a gun up. So by being yellow, I was a part of his plan. Mr. Johnson, telling us isn't enough. You've got to tell it in court. I can't. Why not? I can't explain now. Honey, I'm proud of you for admitting what you have. I think you should testify. I said no, Julie. Judge, can I put it in writing, a deposition? McCain's attorney could accuse us of extracting it from you by force. Your story involves too much land, too many people. It ought to be heard in public. What are you afraid of, Scott? If he told you that, his mind's made up. You should have brought him here. Or gun him on a spot. I did just like you told me. Tell the boys to saddle up. We're riding to Scott's place. Come on. Judge, they threatened to go after my wife. Kind of figured something like that. We'll protect her. But there's only two of you. We can deputize the county if necessary. Deputize the county? McCain owns the county. He's got power. He'll stop at nothing. Judge, all I'm asking is time to get Julie out of town. Then I'll come back and testify and do anything you want. Scott, leaving this town's a dead giveaway of what you aim to do. 
McCain's man would hunt you down. Scott Price, just go over the hill. We'll pull up and walk. I think you'd better come with us, both of you. I'll get out a bench warrant for McCain's arrest. And have him tried by sundown. With McCain in jail, you wouldn't have anybody to worry about hurting your wife. But you... That's it. Darling, you've wanted to tell the truth all along. But you thought it was easier and safer to put it off. Now is the time to face McCain. Face him in court. Don't be afraid to go down there. Because I'm not afraid to go down there with you. Hold it. I want this place covered from all sides. Spread out. Joe, Bert, Hardy, stay with me. Get down, Joe. Tell the boys to wait until I fire. We'll catch them in the open. Wait till McCain fires. All right. Wait for McCain to fire. Insight. You check upstream, I'll check down. Testify for you after all. Don't say that, son. You're gonna be all right, son. Judge, 
McGill, Sebastian. Find him. He's delirious. Sebastian's dead. McGill, Sebastian. Is alive. Diego told me. Son, do you realize what you're saying? <coughs> McGill, Sebastian, was with Diego not more than eight months ago. <coughs> <coughs> You just don't understand. Scott wouldn't be here if it weren't for me. No, no. I forced him. I drove him to it. The doctor says he's going to be all right, Julie. It'll just take time. You've made a man of him. A dead man, maybe. He's going to live, Julie. And the price you've both paid is small for what lies ahead. Maybe you're right, Judge. Maybe. I tell you, I'm going to bring McCain in. And I tell you, son, you hadn't ought to go out there with less than an army. If you want to do something practical, why don't you try and find Sebastian? Oh, that's sensible. Maybe Diego can put you on his trail. Oh, that's smart. All right. I'll look for Sebastian. Oh, son, that's very wise. The doc's taking good care of Scott, Julie. I wouldn't worry about it. See you later, Dad. You too, Pop. Bye, son. I hope nothing happens to that boy. He's so nice. Where's Miguel Sebastian? Sebastian? I have not seen him since... Uh, I mean, he's dead. He died at the close of the war. I can lie better than that when I'm loaded. Look, Sebastian isn't dead and we know it. Now, where is he? You better tell us in front of him. McCain's authorized us to make a deal. You can have title to this land if you tell us. Why do you want to find Senor Sebastian? Look, if you don't tell us, we're going to find him anyway. Now, where is he? No! Oh! Oh! Help! You didn't have to do that, Pardee. You want him to tell everybody else how to find Sebastian? to La Cresta in search of Señor Sebastián.
Yep, that's the marshal's horse, all right. Here's a good spot to take care of him. Scalp could be hanging from a Comanche war belt. gonna leave me out here. Well, we're sure not gonna wait. Hold it. All right, boys. Right double. I'm hurt, Marshal. I think I'm done. Oh, no, you're not. You're gonna live long enough to help me find Sebastian. Young, U.S. Deputy Marshal. You got a doctor in this town? No, senor. The padre, he takes care of the sick. Get him for me, will you? Si, senor. 
Police. Si, senor. Has a stranger ridden in this town the last couple hours? No, senor, no one. Okay. Someone. Maybe you can help me. His name is Sebastian. Miguel Sebastian. I'm anxious to find him. In Mexico, Sebastian is a very common name, senor. It means nothing to me. Por favor, senor, I would like to talk to you. About... Pronto, vámonos de aquí. Fuera sin vergüenza. No sea borracho sin vergüenza. Que no vengas para acá, borracho sin vergüenza. Pepe. Comentar de padre that there is an Americano in our pueblo that's looking for Miguel Sebastián. Borracho sin vergüenza, ya me vuelves loco, ya no sé lo que hacer. Padre, could I speak to you? Later, Pepe. The father is busy now, eh? Vamos, padre, eh? Miguel Sebastián, señor. That's right. You pay Pepe? You pay good? Sure. Have a seat. I've told you a hundred times. That's all right. He's with me. Bring a bottle. But, but señor, I... Rado. See, right away. seriously wounded. You found him alongside the trail? Or you... Oh, it's not what you're thinking, Padre. I'm a peace officer for my government. This man and two others were riding into your town to kill a man. Miguel Sebastian. Miguel Sebastian? Where is he? Well, you, you see, senor... Uh... Where is he, Pepe? I... Uh, uh... Perhaps the man that I know and the one you're looking for are not the same one. Look, Pepe, if you thought someone was going to try to kill Sebastian, would you want to help him? Si. Si. Someone is going to try to kill him. I'm here to warn him. Well, who would want to kill him? A man who was in the Mexican War with him. He's on his way to Las Cresta. For all I know, he may be here now. And that's why he was with the policia. Come, senor. I will take you to Miguel Sebastian now. We must warn him. He's just down the street. Where? At the office of the policia. Good. Here, buy yourself a bottle. I'll warn Sebastian. Senor! I told you to buy yourself a bottle, not get. No, our, our friend, he's over there. I know. But you tell me his life is in danger. Someone is going to kill him. You. You're going to kill him. Get back in the cantina. But... Get back in the cantina, there's going to be a double killing. What is it, Bill? The Padre. He's Miguel Sebastian. Padre! Padre! 
Make it out of the hurry, Emmett. I picked up another dozen head of strays. That's good, good. Let's get a move on, Duffy. We want to get on by tonight. Check with him. Well, well, well. Killing his honor, the judge. <laughs> but Kane won't have to stand trial now. <laughs> yeah, now we can shoot the judge for trespassing. It's hot. How's Scott? Coming along. You've got to learn to shoot better. Now, now, Judge, give credit where credit's due. Watch a cattle thief shot old Scott. Same bunch shot Diego. That's not what his widow says. You know, Judge, you can't always believe old ladies. Well, we'll leave all those lesser charges to later. Right now, your big stake is the Sebastian Land Grant. I think you're gonna lose it. Judge, it's Scott's word against mine. Now, who do you think the jury is gonna believe? I think they're gonna believe Senor Miguel Sebastian. What do you mean, a man died in combat? Why, I got a special dispatch from my son, the Marshal, and he tells me that he's escorting Senor Sebastian here. He also says the men you sent to kill Sebastian are all dead and taken care of. Mr. McCain, here's a subpoena for you to appear in court. 10 a.m. tomorrow. When the marshals do in, boys. beautiful than when I left. Marshal, there are too many for us. I know this country. Follow me. Oh, 
follow me. We go underground for a wing. Might know it too? Yes, possible. and the marshal got through us. Opie and me got back. He's, he's hurt pretty bad, though. The rest of the men were killed. Look, McCain, there's no stopping that trial. We got to think about scooting. Look, I don't run from nobody, you understand? Now, I'm going to teach the law not to stick their nose in my bailiwick. I want you and the boys to round up the cattle. Now? Right now. I want that herd moved to that grazing strip above town. You can make it by dawn. And I want you to get every fence rider and waddy in town that can shoot. I'll use the cattle as a cover-up and then stampede them through the streets. And we'll gun down every man in that courtroom. Now get going. This land is mine. I built it and I'm going to keep it. I'm going into that court. I don't think they'll get a jury. But if they do, I doubt if they've got guts enough to find against me. If they do, they'll never make the verdict stick. They'll never arrest me. They're going to have to fight. But I'm going to need your help, and I'm going to cut you in. Get your own spread. You've got the piece you want him, and it's yours. That's right. Tex, you've got the sheep land. Marty, you've got the stretch across the dry lake. I like it. The ridge. Who wants a timber? I take it. It's yours. Now you got it, Sam. How about that, boy? Now we're with you. Now you can take any piece of ground you want, and I won't haggle. But I want you with me. And if we have to gun our way out of town, we're going to do it. We'll be there, boy. Boy, we'll be right behind you. But from then on out, we'll make our own laws. This country's mine, all mine. We'll draw a circle around it and let America go on past us. Are you with me?
Sorry, we ain't been able to build a proper courthouse, Your Honor. Sheriff, court is held wherever I left my gavel. Morning, Julie. Good morning, Judge. How's your husband? He's better, but the doctor says he won't be able to testify. Won't be necessary now. Hey, here comes Barry and Sebastian! Yeah! Hello, son. Hi, you, Dad. Meet Padre Sebastian. It's a pleasure, Father. Your Honor. I'm counting on you to pull a few chestnuts out of the fire for me today. I hope my presence here will be of some help. The important thing is you're alive and here. <laughs> that is thanks to your son. Have a chair. I'm a busy man, and I don't like to idle time away. Let's get on with the trial. As soon as this show is over, there'll be drinks for everybody. On me. Get out. Gentlemen, please be kind enough to remove their hats. Mr. McCain. The hat. This court is now in session to hear the case of the people versus Angus Clyde McCain. Also, Timothy Boyle, deceased, Damon Pardee, deceased, and Scott Johnson, incapacitated. The charges, extortion, bribery, fraud, land theft, invasion of property rights, attempted murder, and murder. <laughs> Guilty or not guilty is charged? Not guilty. And I defy the man to find me guilty. Any killings that I might have done were done in self-defense to protect my property rights. And any killings done by any man on my payroll was their own doings. And for that, I can't be held responsible.
Father Sebastian, I'd like to ask you a few questions. I will answer what I can, Your Honor. Do you recognize the defendant? I do. How did you meet? In a battle at the close of the Mexican War. We were told that you met in a gambling hall in Matamoros. I have never been in Matamoros. Did the defendant McCain pay you for the title, the Sebastian Land Grant? In a way, he did. Would you say maybe $850? Considerably more. Exactly how much in dollars and cents? How can a man evaluate his life in dollars and cents? My story begins the day Santa Ana surrendered. It was a sad day. In the battle at my hacienda, my compadre had all been killed by Captain McCain and his men. My courier and I were the only ones left. We went upstairs with the captain. I thought to talk terms of the peace. Well, there's the end to it. I'm glad to see it. We've been a part of much killing, Captain. From this time on, I intend to do something with my life. Oh? In what way? I'm not yet sure. But I shall renounce the life I have led. I will try to make amends. Trouble is, Captain, you're not going to live that long. I don't understand. The war has ended. I know. But you've been branded as a traitor. By whom? By the United States government. Well, that's impossible. I'm a Mexican soldier. I fully realize that. But you declared this hacienda and all your land grant as neutral territory. You were given military sanctuary as though you were an American citizen. And what did you do? You fortified this place. Set yourself up as a guerrilla chief, raided our supply lines, and engaged in espionage. After your troops invaded my land, you violated the agreement with your country. I did these things rightfully as a soldier. Right. It doesn't do any good to plead your case to me. I'm just a man who's going to take you back to be shot. Unless, of course, you want to make a deal. How's that? You can swap the Sebastian land grant for your life. All you've got to do is sign the deed and we'll turn you loose. You can go any place you want. Right, Party? That's right, Captain. Rodriguez to the chest. See, si, Capitan. Call the boys. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Johnson! Boyle! The captain wants to see you! Some box at the family crest. Yes. The Sebastians came from Granada in the time of Cortes. And this encomienda, this land grant of which we speak, granted to my family by Philip, King of Spain. Sergeant, what's this all about? You're going to get rich. What does it amount to? A couple of hundred acres? A couple of hundred. This says west from the Pecos to the Rio Grande. And north from Chihuahua to Santa Fe. Why, nobody owns that much land. This document's official. It's recorded here. And you'll sign it over to us if we let you go loose? 
That is what we discussed? What if he has brothers or relatives, somebody to challenge it? I am the last of my family. Captain, you're under orders to take this man back. So we report him killed in action. It won't work. It will if everybody keeps his mouth shut. Captain, you're using Uncle Sam's uniform to extort property. We volunteered for duration of conflict. Our duty's done. Senor, predate that back to last year. Just in case anybody inquires as to when and under what circumstances we acquired it. Of course, Captain. What is your full name? Angus Clyde McCain. Captain, this is collaboration with the enemy. We're not discharged yet. Scott, all you've got to do is witness this signature. I'm sorry, sir. I'm under military orders. Lieutenant Johnson, this is a good soldier who's going to be shot if we take him back. So we're going to let him live. Now, you either sign this deed or you're going to be listed as one of our casualties. Shed those uniforms and pack whatever equipment you need. Captain, some of the people who live on this land have served my family for many years. I have given them the small farms which they worked. They will be permitted to remain. They'll be treated fairly. Gracias. I'm sure they will. Where are you heading for? Miss Savvy, there are so many forgotten places. Good luck, senors. Thank you for another life. Adios. Vamanos. Hardy. Yes, sir. Right on ahead at the post and uh, send us a burial detail. Yes, The sergeant left me there for dead. It was God's will to keep me alive. Father, are you telling this court that the defendant McCain forced you to trade your life for your land? We made a bargain. And I thought he meant to keep it. In your opinion, was this transfer of land legal? The transfer? The transfer was legal. Father, the fact that you're alive 
There's prima facie evidence that the defendant, McCain, altered military records. We're here to question my ownership of land, not my military background. They're tied together in this case. Were you a captain in the Mexican Army? I was. Were you a captain in the U.S. Cavalry? That's right. The fifth. There's no further need to question any witnesses. A matter of jurisdiction is involved. The jury is dismissed. I'm not standing trial without a jury. You're not dismissed, McCain. Sit down. country clearly state that no United States soldier can bargain with the enemy in wartime. Therefore, the defendant, Angus McCain, never legally acquired title of the Sebastian land grant. It is still in the possession of the good father, Sebastian, and he can do with it as he wishes. Angus McCain, I hereby remand you to the custody of the United States Marshal for a transfer to Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, where you will stand trial under military court-martial on charges of collaboration with the enemy and high treason. So found this day in court and recorded. Let's get out of here. you have your land back again, Father? No, my child. The land belongs to the people who live on it. And with your help, this time we will make it legal. <laughs> 